on the evening of 18 April 1775, Colonel Joseph Warren learned from a highly placed person in the British cabinet that they had learned there was a stockpile of weapons at Concord, Massachusetts. He tasked Silversmith, Paul Revere and Tanner, William Dawes, to ride separately to warn people in Lexington and Concord that the Redcoats were coming. The signal was one lamp in the Old North Church that they were coming by land, two if they were coming by sea. I am Rob Geiger. I am the president of our association. At this time, I'm going to be asking for the ones that can to make their way down because we're going to go into the ribbon ceremony uh, shortly. I will ask if Steve Ramey is here, Dale Eads, Dave Kennedy, Kathy Bailey, Dave Miller, Steve Max, Kevin Egan, Ralph Dunnigan, Terry Schleifmeyer, Debbie Niehaus, John Brindenfolder, Ed Holgan, Marjorie Dominey, Dave Castile, and we already have Kay Thompson in place, and she is the oldest living descendant of the Paxton line at 102. So good All I can say is what a journey. The first interment is Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Paxton, he was buried here in 1813. The burial for our family continued to 1913. The cemetery laid dormant for a while because the family farm was uh, sold out of the family in the 1880s. By doing that, there was private ownership, but they never owned the cemetery. Until 1987, Gene and Earl Wilson got together with a professional groundsman, and they got permission from Helen Fisher, the owner of the farm at that time, to come back. I saw pictures in the past. You would not recognize the place. It had overgrown vines, trees, bushes, and you could not see a headstone. With their efforts in 1987, they cleared it out, they repaired some of the fencing, they put up barbed wire, some chain link, and at least they secured it. Then the next time, the, Earl Wilson would come up here periodically to make a path from 48 up here, and they would keep it trimmed and mowed. Then the next chapter of the cemetery was the 1996. Unfortunately, it was not a happy one at first because the family had a lawsuit of eminent domain to try to take the cemetery away from us. You do not mess with Pioneer Stock because we will come back every time and fight you. It had a positive outcome. We remained as the owners of the cemetery. We also incorporated as the Wright Ramsey Paxton Cemetery Association and became a 50C3. We formed trustees. And do we have any of the original trustees, which I know we have one that no longer serves on the board, Glenna Carpenter. Yay. We've got Dee and Frank Butler, 
Frank is our treasurer. He is a our secretary. We have Katie Geiger. She's a trust, trustee. Soon we will have more trustees. I already got their bios, and you're coming up for a vote to join our happy group. It took three times for capital improvement to get where we are today. The first two, we did not have very much success. Third time's a charm. So it'll be four years in September. Lillian Myers, four years ago, about this time, came up. She is a cousin from California. And she says, it is time to do something. I said, but you're not here to help. She says, I'll give you support, but I live in California. So the kickoff was in September, four years ago, to start raising the funds. Since then, we raised funds. We had a pandemic. I had kidney cancer. My daughter had leukemia. But you do not mess with Pioneer Stock family because we're going to come through. So here are some fun facts. The family itself raised, as of yesterday, $8,200 for this project. Private individuals, non-family members, gave $3,706. The businesses in Loveland area donated $3,900. We had a few fundraising activities, and it raised the $2,894 with a grand total of 18625 Market rate pre-COVID, because everything skyrocketed afterwards, this project would have cost $37,774. Our actual cost, we still got some more expenditures out there, but as of yesterday, our cost is $16,478. The in-kind donation from the, our community partners, total 21,314. Thank you. All I can say is thank you from the bottom of my heart. Between 1910 and 1912, about that time frame, there was an epidemic, imagine that, go up through this area and killed a lot of the farmhands, that not only to this farm, but other farms. They did not have any money. So they came to my third great grandma, which was um, Minerva Arbuckle Ramsey, and asked if they could bury their dead in the cemetery. We do not know who they are. But as you go through, we found field stones and impressions, knowing somebody's buried there. So we have a lot of the markers there. Um, you don't know how many people have come together to make this a reality. Thank you so much for the DAR, but no more Zoom meetings. I'm so <laughs> depressed. The D SAR, the American Legion, the Auxiliary Group, the VFW, community partners, and it's time to share our thanks and gratitude to them. Again, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for coming out. Um, throughout the time as the cemetery disappeared with all the growth until the mid 80s. Sometimes we forget about our past. This morning I was not happy at all with the rain or in the wind and it was much cooler. And I went upstairs to get dressed and it dawned on me, Rob, listen to yourself. It is in the 50s. It's not pouring down rain. We're not having snow. Your ancestors did a whole lot more. And here I am griping about mist and rain and being in the 50s. It is unbelievable what a pioneer family would go through. At this time, by looking at the ceremony, seeing everything that was happening, I start choking up. And the reason why is thank you. Thank you for recognizing them. Each and every one Thank you for coming out for this dedication. It was very moving and very touching for each and every one of you to be here. And thank you.